Thank you, Dr. DeSalle. Um, again, my name's Joe Fauché, and you stole my thunder. My, uh, my primary role, and at least my favorite role in life, is being the father of Amanda. And now that she's gotten into her senior year and uh, has just a few months before graduation and leaving here, it's causing me to think a lot about the paths that people take in life. It makes me think about the path she's going to take in life. And what I'm going to talk to you about is the paths that have come before me, a little bit about my own path, and some advice that I have for you, especially those of you who are nearing the end of your high school years and about to embark on your own path in life. Today's February 6, 2014. It's the 61st anniversary of my parents' wedding. So don't infer anything. I was the youngest child of several. So. Um, but it's as good a day as any, I think, to talk a little bit about his path and to tell you his story. Um, my dad was born in Maine in 1924. To a very, he was the seventh of nine children in a very poor family in central Maine. Uh, life, the stories that he told me about his life had little to do with any luxuries. You never heard those stories. What you heard about was meeting necessities, filling needs, feeding these nine children, clothing these nine children. Um, it, was, it was tough. It wasn't the same as just uh, heading over to dinner at Mastro's. God forbid we don't have to, we're not going to go to Gelson's. I mean, we actually have to go out and forage for wild dandelions. That's how they met their life. That's how the necessities were met in life. Um, the most food he ever saw was the food that he saw in the mess hall uh, near the end of uh, World War II in the Navy. And when he got out of the Navy, those necessities still remained. And he didn't have a lot of ways to meet them, and there certainly wasn't much work in Maine. So he got in his broken down car along with one of his French Canadian buddies, and he headed west to where there might be some work in a car that was living on borrowed time. And that time and the car's battery ran out 1,500 miles or so west in Waterloo, Iowa, which is where the kindness of, of someone there led him to get a new car battery on non-existent credit. And it seemed like as good a place as any to put down roots and to try to find work and to, and to make a life. And he did. And he never regretted staying, but he did regret from time to time not taking those next steps and not doing what he thought would make himself more successful, like go to college. And so when it came to talking to me and what he wanted from me, he'd say, just go to college, do anything. Anything you can do, get yourself to college. Well, I did go to college. The thought never occurred to me that I might not, even though I felt a little bit like I was honoring him by going ahead and, and, and going. And when that time ended, uh, now I had to pick my own path. It wasn't the path of necessity. My, my dad had seen to that. Um, what path would it be? I had a political science degree, which is something in the people in the 1980s really only did one thing with, and they went to law school. The thought never occurred to me really to do anything else, because everyone that I knew that was in the political science program at the University of Iowa in 1985 went to law school. Why not me? Did I really think about it? No. I never really gave it any thought. I, it, now, it's worked out well for me. I've been lucky. I've had a job that's been interesting. I've had a job that's allowed me to, to help people. Perhaps one of the things that's best about it is together with, with my wife, who's also a, an attorney, we've been able to send Amanda to this remarkable, remarkable school where she gets a glimpse of what might come in life, uh, things, that, uh, things that, that are interesting in life, things that are fascinating in life, gives you an opportunity to think about what you might want to do in life. But what I recommend to you, especially those of you that are seniors in the room, that you take that path. The path that I took is a path that I described as the path of least resistance. It's, it's, it's not giving serious thought. It's not the chosen path. It's the path that you end up on. As I say, it worked out. But what I hope for all of you is that you take the chosen path. Why? Sometimes I hear people say to me, I think you missed your calling. They, they, they think I'm a comedian. I'm not going to try to put on my, I'm not going to tell you any jokes. But they, they think that I have something to add. They think maybe, gee, you really could have been, you, you could have actually entertained people. And I wonder from time to time, did I miss my calling? Do any of us have a calling? I, I don't know. I don't know if there is such a thing. What I do know is that from time to time, I come across people who say to me, you know, every day that I get up and go to work, I'm happy to be going. I don't even think of it as work. I think if, if, I, had, if I had to do it all over again, this is exactly what I do. And isn't that what we should all strive for in life? Do we... Shouldn't we all be thinking about that, grabbing that, seeking that relentlessly and pursuing it? I think that, that we should. I think we shouldn't leave it to luck. That's why I think you shouldn't take the path of least resistance. 
But it's easier said than done, isn't it, to get there? How do we get there? How do we begin to think about going someplace, getting someplace that is going to put us on a path, the chosen path, that you're going to love everything you do every day? Well, I mean, after all, you, you students in the room, you're like Napoleon Dynamite, aren't you? You got no skills. You got no nunchuck skills. You got no bow hunting skills. I mean, you, see, this is the wrong way for you to think about it. When, even Napoleon Dynamite ultimately surpassed those because he did this crazy little dance to himself in a way to get him, his best friend elected as student body president because he disregarded his lack of skills and he focused on his strengths. And in a weird, weird way, this frivolous, frivolous little movie is, takes me to the point that I want to tell to you and to give you some thoughts about how you go about finding your chosen path. Step one, begin today to define yourself by your strengths, not by your weaknesses. Don't even think about your weaknesses. I can promise you that the most successful person that you know and the most successful person that you can even think of has tremendous weaknesses. They have real weaknesses that get in their way of fulfilling them, their true selves. But weaknesses don't belong on this list and you, there's no reason to focus on them. It's not to say that you shouldn't work to improve them, you should. But when you're thinking about finding the chosen path and taking it, focus first on your strengths. The people, the most successful people are always defined by their strengths. When you think of them, you think of their strengths and not their weaknesses. And if those people deserve to be thought of in light of their strengths, shouldn't you be thought of that way too? Step number two, begin today to pave your chosen path. Make it real, make it concrete to take, uh, to, to sort of add a weird little phrase to the term path. Don't just define yourself by your strengths, write them down. Schedule a 20 minute painless appointment with yourself. What do I mean by painless? Go to Starbucks, write it in your calendar. I'm gonna go have Starbucks and I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna have a nice coffee and I'm gonna make a list of all the things that are best about me, things that I do well. I'm a good people person, I'm a good numbers person, I'm a good actor, I'm a good uh, engineer, I have, I have strengths and skills that I can bring to the world that people are interested in and that make me interesting. Is there anything more important than that 20 minute time you might take for yourself and your own life to think about what do I want in life and how do I get there? Now once you write them down those strengths are no longer abstract. They're part of your plan. They're part of your life. They're part of your path. Be specific and be detailed in compiling your list of strengths if no one else, you, you're the one who knows your strengths and they're real, write them down. Periodically revise this list of your strengths. Recognize that it's going to evolve and it's going to change as you grow and as you gain new experiences. You're going to get better at things that you weren't previously good at. The third step is to begin today to define the direction that your path takes. The direction of the chosen path is, the, is dictated by what you love to do, by what you find interesting in life. Why not Make that the path that you take. Why not let that dictate where you go rather than luck? Make a list of the things that you really love to do. What do I love to do? I mean, this isn't just me, but somebody might love to discuss sports. They might love to analyze stocks. I don't. They might care for animals. They might act on stage. They might build robots. They might teach fitness. They might write music. These are things that every one of you knows someone here in the Viewpoint community excels at. Why not you? Why not, why not pursue the thing you love to do? Talk to people. Ask for help. I can tell you that if any of you are actually interested and, and fascinated about the concept of being a lawyer and the business of law and what it takes and what you do and how it works, I'd be thrilled to have you come talk to me. And most people would love to have you come talk to them as well. They, people like to help people. And if, if your life matters to you, and it should, Reach out to people that you find interesting and that do something that you think you might want to do. It's not too soon. Finally, begin today to walk that path. You have a list of your strengths in hand if you take my advice. You have a list of what you love to do if you take my advice. Do those things. Walk that path. Pursue that chosen path. And don't worry if your, if your list of strengths changes, if the list of things you love to do change. If you focus on your strengths and if you focus on what you love to do, the chosen path is always the best, best path. It, it, it almost always will work out better than the path of least resistance. And I hope for all of you that the paths that you take are happy and fulfilling. Thanks very much. <laughs>